so I've been using the iPhone 15 Pro Max for almost a week now now let's talk about it so the iPhone 15 Pro Max great phone so as the iPhone 14 Pro Max great phone what's the difference I'm gonna talk about some key differences that I see but in many ways these phones are very similar and I'm gonna give you a difference and a breakdown of does it work the upgrade does the 15 Pro Max work the upgrade in the long run um, we're gonna get into that let's talk about the 15 Pro Max so the 15 Pro Max comes in 256 gigabyte up to one terabyte and it starts at twelve hundred dollars that's the base storage because you know they cut out the 128 gigabyte this year just so apple can make some more money we're just going to be honest about that um it's a 6.7 inch um super hdr display with promotion which is a 120 hertz refresh rate basically promotion is what i just described the 120 hertz refresh rate it basically goes up and down depending on how you use the phone so if you're going through like intense type of like like maybe social media or scrolling or searching whatever thing that you're going through on your phone depending on what the display requires for it to move that's the heritage you're gonna get um this phone it comes with always on display so whenever you turn the phone off like you turn the screen off they basically you know you know if you're an android user you know what on uh, always on display is um, it's a great feature apple late but you know when apple do it apple do it the apple way so all of that i just basically describe it's not really nothing new when you basically have the 14 pro max that can do all the same stuff so what i'm gonna break down today i'm gonna try and find the new and the features about this phone that you might consider buying later on maybe in the future or if you want to stick with your 13 pro max or your 14 pro max okay so i'm gonna get into one of the new features that comes with the phone which is the titanium the titanium built <clears throat> it's a bit lighter i can definitely feel the difference because i have it in the case now and, and i'm not gonna lie this is a lightweight case as well the fine woven case by the way look out for that video within the next two months i'm doing a durability test to see how durable the fine woven cases so make sure you guys check that one out soon whenever i drop it so yeah that gonna be a dope video but um as i said it's in the case it's noticeably lighter i can feel i can feel the difference from the stainless steel to the titanium however as you can see if you watch some drop test you'll see that the 14 pro max are the 14 pro max pros the pros and the pro max from the 14 version is definitely more durable i'm not gonna lie about that i have to be honest about it. i saw some videos and saw some drop test and the 14 pros basically hold up way better than the 15 pros um the action button the action button is a new feature that apple added to the new 15 um lineup the pros lineup the 15 pro the 15 pro max what the action button does it's basically similar to the mute switcher with a bit key differences so what you can do with the action button is you can basically go to settings you'll go to action button and you get like a wide range list of options what you can use to do with the action button you can use the action button to open for example the flashlight what you do you, you hold down on the action button for like a quick two seconds a millisecond then you're gonna pop the flashlight um, on or you can hold it again to turn it off you can use the the action button to basically open like um voice memos if you want to record voice memo right off the get we don't have to jump in into the app it'll record it right from the action button um you can use it to open the camera and my personal favorite that i enjoyed under the silent switcher and the um the the notification ringer that i really enjoyed in the first place was that mute switch that's all i use it for honestly like i don't really care about too much about 
it open in the camera the camera is right there on the front of the screen right there that i can just pop open so I, that's not necessary for me i wouldn't say the flashlight the flashlight is also on the corner of the screen for me so it's convenient or i can do this i can back tap and then back tap again should turn it off i know when i turn off i play trolling me right now but anyways i can turn it off from here but you get the point you basically you back tap you turn it on you back tap there we go you turn it off so those are some features that you can already do by yourself even with your 14 pro max but as i said the, the it's something new apple did and it's a bit convenient as i said me personally i use it for the the mute switch so i turn the mute i turn the phone on mute or take it off mute and for me i do like the haptic it it it, it is like it has like a nice to do to like a feel to it you'd have to have it in your hand to see what i'm talking about um it's dope though as i mentioned before it's a 6.7 inch display so it's a big this a big display it's more it has slightly smaller bezels around the display so it looks a little bit smaller if you're a person who's into tech but if you're a regular person you're not going to see much difference even from the 13 pro max come up to the 14 pro max um it's a smooth refresh rate so whenever you go into like um a website and you're scrolling you'll see the the the, the 120 hertz promotion display kicks in you'll see this it has very nice fluidity it's like hot knife cutting like a butter it's really smooth so that's the purpose of the 120 hertz display and you know apple phones are already uppity fast so just imagine the speed of an apple phone with that refresh rate as well oh, you know what i mean you get a super beast right there but as i said most of what i'm talking about you can actually also get it <laughs> believe it or not in the 13 pro max and in the 14 pro max but i'm gonna give you like a key difference that's what make the 15 pro max a little bit better and why you can consider if you're coming from maybe like a older phone right because we have to like break down the big differences with the display and all of that as i said nice lightweight phone when i'm out there in the public and i'm holding it it doesn't feel like i'm getting any strain on my hands um i can hold it for like long periods of time it's not like when i had the 14 pro max i have to like put it on a little bit it does get a little bit heavier after a while but you know it does hold up it's not a bad phone to basically hold you know um the display can go up to the brightness of the display is it's honestly the same brightness as last year so it's the same display same brightness which you can go up to 2000 nits outside which is fucking ridiculous up to 2000 nitage of brightness stagnation like me jesus how much brightness you want on a phone and why i say that is as you can see when you're outside in direct sunlight it seems as if like you're not even in sunlight that's how bright the display is it's super bright and you can see all your text correctly you can see whether whenever you're scrolling whatever you're doing it's uppity now the dynamic island you have the dynamic island where you can basically you can use the dynamic island to open the music you can play the music swipe up over you're gonna see the little um, animation where it pops back up in the dynamic island you can hold down on that dynamic island you can see the music that you're playing you can use the island to open up maps and a lot of range of different stuff which you guessed it you can also use it on the 14 pro max so as you can see while i'm basically giving you the review of the 15 pro max you're telling yourself like there's not much difference within the phone right but there's a slight difference when it comes on to the processor which is a a17 pro bionic chip that's what they call it comparing to the a16 bionic chip of last year super uppity efficient chip it's a great chip it basically performs out of the blue it has a three nanometer processor what three nanometer processor means basically you get more power from your phone you know it's more efficient it's faster to the touch everything will you see much difference as an average user using your 14 pro max 
honestly no but a power user like me you will see a difference in video editing playing games for example so as this game that the game example that i'm showing you You'll see a big difference in playing a game. Um, definitely will see a graphic improvement because of that new chip. It's a power hunger chip. So, and the irony is from that power hunger chip, you don't basically get the greatest battery life if you're a power user. But if you're an average user, you're okay with this battery. I'm not going to lie. You're not going to complain about this battery. If you're a person just check social media from time to time, receive calls. Like me, I fucking edit. I shoot videos. I take pictures. I do everything. Like yesterday, because I do delivery. I do delivery as a side hustle while I, um, I, I build my entertainment and tech reviews with you guys. So while I'm doing delivery, this phone never turns off. Never turns off, bro. Yesterday... I had the phone on for like five hours straight, not off. I charged up to 70%. Within five hours, it was like 22%. Bro, that's up pity. I'm not going to lie. That's fucking up pity because I'm comparing to a person who has their phone off. Just take a call, check social media. The battery obviously going to last them longer. But for, person, for a person like me or other tech people out there who does tech or use their phone like very hard and efficient, we want a bit more. That's just what it is. No, the cameras, the cameras are basically dope this year. I'm not gonna lie, see a big difference with the cameras, and you also can zoom up to 25 times with a image stabilization where you can stabilize your image so you can get a good uppity shot from a very far away. So if you're a pervert, I see a nice uppity girl, I want to see a close up of her face. <laughs> no, you have that option. <laughs> Me Jesus, but get up nation. That's the iPhone 15 Pro Max review. Is it worth the upgrade? If you have a 14 Pro Max, hell to the fucking no. Keep your 14 Pro Max. But if you want to live your life, it's your life. You work hard, go get a 15 Pro Max. You have a 13 Pro Max, should you upgrade? In my opinion, hell to the fucking no. Enjoy your life. If you want to upgrade, you upgrade. But if you have a 10XR, a 10R, or a XR, or 11, or 11R, I would personally say upgrade. You will definitely see a big difference in the bezels, in the display and in the display technology and the chip so the overall benefits of the phone that's what it is it's a dope uppity phone bro um i have a, a video coming up soon on how to use the action button so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video please stop nation that gonna be a dope uppity video and i'm gonna give you five to six features that the new iphones have that you probably didn't know and also older iphones have but we're talking about the new iphones now so we're gonna always talk about the newest features our features on the new iphone so i just wanna appreciate love you guys we don't appreciate hate we appreciate love you guys for stopping by taking the time out to listen and watch the review with me bless up you guys bless up on yourself love on you. tab nation and we're on a journey together and let's do it you dig what i'm saying this is the daniel tech reviews me jesus 15 Pro Max. I'm out.